So when talking about ethics in the nutrition world, we did a couple case studies. Um, again, I don't want you guys to memorize the principles of ethics, just in general know what would be an ethical issue, what would not, what are we allowed to do. Um, so ethics is basically going to be that study of um, nature and justification. Um, and it's a guide to human behavior um, when we apply it to any type of problem that may be morally wrong. It's really about balancing goals and values to achieve justification. What I want you to know is that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, their fundamental principles, that's what I really want you guys to know. Um, their fundamental principle, number one, is that dietitians and practitioners are going to be honest, are going to have integrity, and are going to be fair. So honesty, integrity, and fairness is the foundation of ethics as a dietitian. And then their second foundational um, principle of ethics is basically you are responsible. So you are responsible to report anything um, that you know is not ethical. So if you saw another dietitian who is not behaving ethically, then we have the responsibility to report that situation. Um, so those are the two that are the most important to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, so be sure to be able to recognize those. We talked about the different types of ethical issues. Uh, so there's four of them that I want you to be aware of. Uh, conflicts of interest and in research is the first one. So this is when you are trying to research yourself or find research um, and there's potential for it to conflict. Uh, so what this means would be um, if you are going to be getting funding from a company, so maybe it's the American Heart Association, and you want to conduct a research on what could be heart healthy. Um, you may have some type of bias or conflict of interest. Um, or as we gave that example in class, there was a private practice dietitian who wanted to do research on the paleo diet and had her patients follow the paleo diet. Um, that's a conflict of interest, again, because you as the dietitian were interested in paleo, and now you're going to only look at paleo and you're not going to look at anything else. Um, business conflict is the second one. So business conflict would be for dietitians who work in the food industry. Um, so dietitians who are employed by the Dairy Council or dietitians who are employed by Kellogg, Cereal. Um, anytime that they are then going to um, project out information about maybe dairy, they have a bias potentially because they work for that company. Uh, with that being said, I don't think I mentioned this in class, um, but the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics does not support any type of endorsement as dietitians. Um, so when we're working in the field, we're not supposed to say that 100% Kellogg's is the best brand or 100% Nature Valley is the best granola bar that you can buy. We don't want to do that. We want to look at the whole diet itself and not name brand. Um, the second, or the third, I'm sorry, area of ethics is ethics and health promotion. So ethics and health promotion, it's basically our responsibility as a community dietitian to read current literature, be up to date on whatever the newest science is. Uh, as dietitians, our entire career and what sets us above a nutritionist is that we are founded upon science-based evidence so if we hear some hoopla in the media talking about, um, I don't even know, Quest Bars preventing heart disease, um, we want to look into that before we go and tell all of our patients that Quest Bars are the best thing on this planet. Um, so we have that responsibility because we are the experts and people are going to believe what we say. So we really want to make sure that we're founded upon that literature, that science-based evidence is crucial crucial. Um, and with that being said, we need to report that properly. Um, so if we report a study that shows, I don't know, sugar 
um, increases your risk of cancer by 80%, but that study was only done on eight people, we shouldn't be reporting that to somebody because that is not a large enough sample size for us to really have a foundation and be able to say absolutely 100% exclude all sugar from your diet. Um, so we need to start learning these tools as we are reading studies. We want to look at the sample size. Was it clinical? Was it observational? Those are all important for us to decipher and then relay that information transparently to the public. So we can say, hey, this new study showed X, Y, and Z, but it was only on 20 people. So it was a small sample size. Um, but it's good information for us to use, so now we can use a larger sample size to see if there really is a larger benefit to it. Um, the last ethics, oh, those are just the three, I'm sorry, or I missed one. Um, the basic principles of protection of human subjects. Um, so the basic principles of protection of human subjects. Uh, this basically just means that if we're going to be conducting research, we have to make sure that the human is safe and we're not going to do harm. And that's really important for us um, because if we don't tell our patients that we're performing some sort of research, that is a huge ethical problem. And uh, we always need to make sure that it's for the benefit of the subjects. Even when we are participating in a clinical trial, we have to get all of that approved to make sure that it's not going to cause harm. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was in my master's program, our research was looking at vitamin D supplementation and body fat percentage. Uh, so we basically wanted to see that if you were deficient in vitamin D and then you started taking vitamin D, would there be any change in your body fat composition? Um, there was a couple of research that had done it that supported it, so we wanted to see if it worked over here. So we had to submit to the IRB what we were going to do. We were going to have two groups. Uh, one group was going to take a placebo, basically just a water sugar pill. And then the other group was going to take vitamin D supplementation. Uh, we screened them so everybody was deficient. And then everybody had a BMI over 40. Uh, we wanted the group to, who was taking the vitamin D to take uh, 10,000 international units of vitamin D and we did not get approval right away because the upper limit is 4,000 international units and so they thought that could potentially cause harm even though literature supports that if a client is vitamin D deficient that it's not going to become toxic until their levels come normal and it was only for 12 weeks so it wouldn't have caused them harm but the IRB didn't approve that, so we had to lower it to 4,000 international units um, because they didn't want any potential of it harming that subject. So that's an example of um, the protection of that human rights. And that's where that Belmont report comes in. The Belmont report is to guide ethical decisions. So when somebody does research that's not ethical, what are the steps and actions taken to carry that out? Um, for the definitions, I just want you guys to recognize the definitions. Um, autonomy. So autonomy is going to be that we provide that individual free choice. A perfect example is if a patient comes into the hospital who is diabetic and has renal disease, if they want a regular diet, they get a regular diet um, because that's called autonomy. And the United States is a huge supporter of this, that we all have the free right to make individual decisions. Um, even though if we know it harms that patient, we have to change their diet to a regular. Um, um, benefits is the do good and prevent or avoid doing harm. Beneficence is doing good with avoiding harm. So you wanna do the most good, but you wanna prevent harm at the same time. Um, justice, so really I just want you to know these three terms. Justice is just treating every individual equally. Um, so if you have two patients who are diabetic, you're not gonna favor the one diabetic over the other diabetic. Um, we wanna try to create all people who are equal. Um, and with that being said, if we have somebody who comes from a low economic standard and somebody who comes from a very wealthy family, we must treat them the same way when we're providing education.
Um, just briefly understanding if we violate the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Code of Ethics, um, we can get our license taken away uh, or we can be suspended. It really just depends on what action is taken out. If you report another person to the um, academy, you must provide detailed information. Uh, so your name, the location, what happened, who was involved, and then you have to sign it as well as all other eyewitnesses have to sign it. So it is not anonymous. Um, they wanna, they take these very seriously um, because potentially someone's registration could be taken away depending on the severity. So those are the key things I want you to know about ethics. Um, and in general, I think most of you are awesome and able to determine if something is ethical or not.